John Day, son of Richard Day and Elizabeth Smith, was born in Cuttsham, Worcestershire, England, September 14, 1847. His wife, Mary Clark, was born March 4, 1846, at Den Didmartin, Glutenshire, England. John and Mary Clark were married October 14, 1868, in Didmartin, England. After joining the Mormon Church, John and Mary, their baby son Rufus, together with John's two brothers, James and George, sailed from England for America on August the 24th, 1869, and came by train from New York to Ogden, Utah, and from Ogden to Fillmore in a covered wagon, arriving in Fillmore September the 28th, 1869, just three months after the first train had arrived in Utah. They lived in the state house for a few weeks and in several other places during the first winter. And in the spring, they began a cellar house with boards for walls, dirt floor with logs and willows roof covered with, covered with dirt. In the dugout, five other children were born. Rufus was born in Denmark, in England, August 10, 1869. Arthur was born July 14, 1871. Emma born June 4, 1876 in Fillmore. Alfred born April 12, 1878 in the dugout home in Fillmore. In 1879, John, with the help of his brothers, built a substantial rock home on the same property as he owned a large section of ground on Block 15. It is a lovely home. Annie was born June 30th, 1880, and William born March 17th, 1885. In the dugout, one night it was raining while one of the children was being born, and the rain was coming through the roof and it was dripping all over Mother Mary and the baby. In the fall of 1884, John and Mary and their children traveled by wagon to St. George. They received their endowments in the temple there, and they had their children sailed to them. The trip took two weeks each way. John was a thrifty, well-organized farmer who provided a good living for his family from his well-managed farm on which he had cattle, hog, hogs, sheep, chickens, and an excellent orchard and vegetable garden. John died April 1, 1928, Mary Clark died April 2nd, 1929, and is buried in the Fillmore Cemetery. John's father, mother, and the other members of his family all came to Fillmore with the next five years after John had arrived there. The first members came from the Immigration Fund, which was paid by John, Mary, James, and George. And these other brothers worked and saved. They sent the money for the other members' families. So pay their way to Fillmore. Mary Clark is the daughter of Luke and Catherine Freich. John, Luke, and Catherine's nine children, Elizabeth, born 1834, George, 1834, Emma, 1836, Isaac, 1838, Robert, 1840, Mary, 1846, William, 1848, and Charles, 1852. The story was told while they lived in the dugout that three, that uh, Mary was worrying about her three brothers because when she came from England, they were getting on the train and three of the brothers hopped off to get some food. They never made it back before the train pulled out again Mary never saw them again. She didn't know what had happened to them. She didn't know if they'd been killed or what. Later on at her dugout in Fillmore, she was crying over her lost brothers. When this Indian lady came to her and gave her a present and consoled her, Mary had helped this Indian lady herself. This lady came to her with her ear cut off. Her husband had gotten mad at her and cut her ear off. Retaliation. John and Mary had worked hard and they built a beautiful home and they had come a long way since they moved out of the dugout. 
They'd worked so hard that they gave much money to the United Order and also had paid off what they owed for the immigration fund. Okay, here's another story. It's about Sadie Powell Payne. Her husband, John, or Jack Payne, better known, was killed at Pine Creek. He was hauling lumber for his new home. He had an extra big load, and when he came down a steep hill, he pulled the brake with the rope on one foot and the rope sling on the oak limb that held it. And he was thrown in front of the team and wagon that ran over his body. The horses and wagons made their way down to town and stopped in front of John Day's home. John's sons, Rufus and Arthur, another person could see the team coming and noted, noted that it didn't have any driver. The lumber was loose. They uh, unhitched the horses and got them and went up the road to see what happened to the driver. They found him about a mile up the road on the dugway, later named Jack Payne Hill. The dog, uh, smell him out was fighting a bunch of coyotes that were after his uh, fresh blood. Coyotes were plentiful in those early days. So Jack left his wife a widow. Now Mr. Edward Bartholomew, a nice man whose wife was dead and children all married, courted Sarah for three years. I remember when she married Uncle Eddie, he was as we called him. The wedding took place in her front room on August 14, 1909. She really didn't expect to get married, but Uncle Eddie brought Nephi Anderson over to marry them and said, it's now or never. So she said, yes. They went to home to live. It was a farm on Main Street at the north end of town. She lived there with him for six years, helping him in every way, keeping house, taking care of him, for he was quite ill or stomach problems. He never complained and was very kind and good to mother, or grands as we often called her. We also loved him for he never, we never had a grandfather we knew. His health failed him and he couldn't do much work, so they bought a place in town and his son-in-law took care of his farm. They had lived in their new home three years when Uncle Eddie was operated for his stomach. Sarah went in the hospital. Sarah went in the hospital the day he got out and underwent a big abdominal operation. They spent the next year calvicing. Uncle Eddie improved a lot for the first time in years, was able to feel well. Nine months after the operation, he took pneumonia and died, February 24, 1920. They had a good picture taken together the day Grandma was 50. Grandma wasn't well. It was an awful shock to her, but she made the best of it as she always did.